Hey everybody, welcome back to another Judgment Commentary of Season 2 of the Castlevania Netflix series. But today, we're going to be checking out Episodes 5 through 8, which happen to be the last episodes of Season 2, before we head right into Season 3. But last time, on the first four episodes, things continued on quite nicely. We got to learn a bit more about the new court established by Dracula, and, uh, well, it's, uh, quite fascinating. There are actually some humans involved in his court. Yeah, in fact, two of the leading members of his army are human. And these two humans, well, we don't know too much about one of them. We have a, a bit of backstory for him, and we know a little bit about what has informed his actions, but the other one, we got quite a lot of detail about him. And we know dang well why he has decided to turn against the human race, why he just wants to wipe them all out, and it's because he had all the human empathy beaten out of him at a young age, and I mean that literally. The poor kid was kind, he just wanted to help out, this guy took him in, and he just wanted to learn the trade and assist him, but he was ruthlessly punished for even daring to attempt to learn this dude's trade. Yeah, that guy sucked. He was supposed to be a man of the church, and then he just starts whipping this kid who he took into his home and even, like, criticized him for still having faith and goodness in his heart? I don't get it. That guy made no sense. But even still, yeah, he had it rough, you know? There was not a lot working in his favor, and by the time Dracula found him, humanity had just not done him any favors. But the other human member of his court, that guy, we don't know as much about what uh, drove him, but we learned a bit, like, how he, uh, had a, had a, well a bit of an interest in resurrecting the dead. And obviously his family wasn't all too cool with that, but... Not sure what made him turn against humanity exactly yet, but... What's interesting about him, though, is that he's not as against humanity as the other guy is. He doesn't believe that all of humanity needs to be extinguished, he just believes it needs to be culled, it just needs to be controlled a bit, that they're just running wild. And Dracula lied to him. He lied to him. He told him that he only planned to dwindle the population of humanity and not just take them all out, but he has every intention of killing every last human, so... But besides that, I still think it's really cool how, you know, the court of Dracula here are not all on the same page. Like, most of them don't really fully agree on any of what Dracula's doing. They've got their own goals in mind, and really none of them really line up with Dracula. Because really, it's pretty much only Dracula and that other guy he has with him, the human, who want all of humanity dead. They, all, all the other ones, they don't want to kill all of them, because they still need to eat people to survive. So yeah, naturally there's going to be a lot of dissent amongst his ranks here. And it is cool to see that not everyone isn't just immediately falling into line just because it's Dracula there. <laughs> They're still willing to stand up for what they need to get done. And really, Carmilla has every reason to be, you know, turning people against Dracula because he is seemingly beyond reason right now. He's not doing any of this, this war on humanity, to help the rest of vampire kind. He's doing it out of revenge because of what they did to Lisa. So, yeah, he, he really doesn't have their best interest at heart here. So, yeah, I think he's pretty much gone mad. So, Carmilla... Yeah, leading, leading them against Dracula here might be for the best, but won't necessarily be easy because Dracula does have one loyal follower still on his side no matter what. He will follow him till death no matter what. As we saw when he, you know, killed Godbrand. The guy expressed even the slightest amount of disloyalty to Dracula, and he took him out. But now, without further ado, let's just get started with episode 5, Last Spell. Ah, season 2. I did like it. It was, uh, really good. <laughs> it continued things uh, after season 1 very well. I mean, season 1, as I call it, was just the first four episodes. Season 1 was really the prologue, and then season 2 
was uh, just the rest of the arc, basically. You know? Just the first four episodes set up everything, and then these uh, eight here just uh, concluded it. Yeah, because I mean, really the bulk of uh, everything that happened happened in these eight episodes. And it just wrapped up so fast. I mean, I guess 12 episodes total, you know, for the first and second season. That's about, like, you know, a core length in regular anime, so... I guess it's not too bizarre. But I'd have thought, you know, the Dracula stuff would have lasted at least, like, a good 24 episodes. I was wrong. But in the end, it was still really good. Just, uh, that epic, climactic battle, you know? I thought they would spend more time to build up to it, but it didn't really matter. <laughs> Just because, uh, they executed it so well. They just waltzed in there, and they, they took him on, man. And sure, Alucard did the the majority of the heavy lifting by the end, but I mean, really, the first part of it was uh, just all three of them fighting, you know, an uphill battle against Drac like that, having to, you know, attack in unison, use their their moves in combination in uh, unique ways. A couple times, most of the time, it was really really just that you know one gets smacked away and the other one jumps in to take their place. But there were a few times when they did uh, work in tandem. Like when he got stabbed through the arms and then she just flamethrowed him to the face. That was good. But in the end, Dracula just realizing how wrong this really was when he sees his son's old room and realizes that he's just... He's beating his own son to death. The one thing he had left from his wife, truly. I mean, just... Just how broken he became when he realized it, you know? The, his beloved son, he was just killing him. He didn't, without even really a word, he just let Alucard stab him and just kill him like that. So even if I thought uh, the Dracula stuff came to a close a little sooner than I would have anticipated, they still played it very well. And we still got some other villains on the horizon. Carmilla has <laughs> unveiled herself as a uh, potent threat in her own right. She lost a lot of her forces, obviously, but unlike Dracula, who they set up as being, you know, uncaring, about uh, the minutia of this, Carmilla cares deeply <laughs> about it. She relishes in the pain and suffering that she inflicts onto others. So even though she does not necessarily intend to kill all of humanity, those who survive, well, they'll wish they were dead. Even with Hector, who he never betrayed her, he never even antagonized her, he was just chilling there, just ready to move on, and then she just takes him as a pet. He, he literally didn't do anything to her. He was helping her. He assisted her with that. And then without him even turning against her, she just starts beating him so badly. Completely unprompted. Because he's a human and she's a vampire, blah, blah, blah. And then of course we have Isaac, who is also intending to raise his own army of the undead as well. After once again, you know, some real dipshit humans coming in here trying to validate his existing feelings about them they just they just see this dude out in the desert drinking from the water and they're like hey look at this thing over here drinking some water what if we want all of that giant oasis you know maybe we'll just tie him up drag him into town and sell him excuse me sell it even worse it could barely even acknowledge his humanity or eat him eat him to even present that it's just insane. How do they keep depicting it this way? We're just this completely absurd, absolutely extreme, horrible things are being presented at him. I mean, it's really not too far off the mark historically, but it just keeps happening. Which, uh, again, I guess is not too far off the mark historically, given the era in which this is. People were like that, man just completely unprompted would just be monstrous. And it was unfortunately relatively common. But yeah, he turned the tables on them, brutally slaughtered them, you know, and just uh, raised them from the dead so he could start his own army. And I would imagine uh, he and Carmilla are going to be at odds, you know? <laughs> I mean, I don't think he would have much reason to side with her necessarily. I mean, yeah, they both want... You know, they're both against humanity, but... I mean, if he gets a chance to talk to Hector... Uh, Hector will... Probably try to reveal her treachery here. Wait, what am I saying? He already knows about her treachery. <laughs> he knows that the forces in there were from her, as Dracula said it, that she made her move, so... 
Yeah, they're definitely gonna be at odds because he knows that she betrayed him. So now we've got two rival forces wielding undead armies against humanity. Each of them with uh, very conflicting notions about what they would intend to do. Because Isaac presumably would want to continue Dracula's plan to kill everybody, but Carmilla doesn't want that. She'll keep some of them alive to torture, play with, and consume. So yeah, these rival agendas are going to really start to clash here, and I uh, assume that'll be pretty interesting to see in the following seasons. Yeah, these episodes, man, woof, they were good. And then now we just gotta <laughs> worry about poor Alucard. He had to kill his own dad, and he still cared about him. He just knew that he had to be stopped because he just wasn't thinking rationally, and then the moment his mind cleared enough to think, he just let himself die. Now Alucard has to deal with that, being alone in his childhood home. I hope Alucard can <laughs> have some type of resolution here. I hope something can make him happy, because I feel so bad for the guy. But now the rest of the gang is off on their own little adventure to, uh, check out re what remains of, like, Carmilla's forces and, you know, the rest of Drax's undead horde. And, uh, they did mention that the, they've seen the corruption of the church, which, yes. <laughs> the church, uh, is very corrupt. At the top level, they showed, like, the head priest dude, the, the pope, if you will. Uh, they talked about how he was into some bad things as well, that he was kind of a scumbag, so... Yeah, they may have to deal with that. Not a pleasant picture of the church being depicted. Also, not historically inaccurate. Speaking purely from a history perspective, uh, bad things went down. Anyway, I think that's all I gotta say for now, guys. But, thank you for watching. Make sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. That would be great. Subscribe to be updated on more. We've only just gotten through half of the Castlevania series now. We've got seasons three and four, which uh, I think both of them are actually longer than uh, the first two. Okay, I know for a fact they are both longer than season one and two. Uh, season 3 is actually 10, which is awkward for me. Damn, I liked when it was just 8, you know, when it was multiples of 4. That worked out really well, but now there's this, you know, ones with 2. That really sucks. And Season 4 is also 10 like that, so... Dang. But technically, if I... It can still even out into 4s, it would just be a little weird. Like it would be that I would do, you know, the first 4 of Season 3... Then uh, the next four, then the last two of season three, and then the first two of season four, and then four, and then I guess, or, or maybe that would be three. I, I don't know. Either way, I'll have to figure it out. I'll, I'll figure it out. It's a lot simpler when it's just the multiples of four, but I'll have to see what I can do. So anyway, thank you once again, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, genuinely. And I hope to catch you next time. But till then, I will see you guys all later.